lovely Sunday morning on this um, last Sunday of the month of May. Thank God for what he has done for us thus far. Amen. We're expecting his visitation again Amen. this morning. We're going to sing together from our hymn book, CGS number 93. CGS 93 will be our first congregational song. We've listened to the choir assuring us about the comforter that has come and with the word of exhortation and encouragement that we shall not be moved. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For our internet audience, we would like to say a warm welcome to you wherever you are. We pray that the Lord who is here with us at our branch here in Peckham will be with you wherever you are and we bless you too. Amen. And just in case you may not know what you are watching or who are these people, we are the Apostolic Faith Peckham Branch, located on 95 Fenham Road, SE 151AE, in case you are visiting or you live locally and you like to join us, you are very welcome. We are just at the beginning of our devotional service. Having listened to the um, orchestra, the comforters come and I shall not be moved from the choir. We're going to sing the three verses of hymn number 93, Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. And Sister Anon Shodipi will be our song leader. Amen. continue thanking God for his word by um, singing CGS 675. CGS 675. I am
sing um, is 670, CGS 670. As we sing um, for the Lord to have his own way in our hearts, Amen. for us to obey his word, he has to have his own way when his word comes out. So we just want to sing this song um, with total devotion to God, just giving ourselves up. We're just gonna we're gonna sing all the four verses um, after the after the introduction by the orchestra. In the last verse, we're gonna stand up before we'll be led in prayer, and the orchestra will also join us to sing in the last verse, standing up. We are all standing and um, looking up to God. And as we want to pray to him, we want to specifically remember one of us who cannot be with us right now and lying there semi-conscious in the hospital, that God who is present with us here, the great physician. Amen. We touch Sister Kende. Amen. Our internet audience that may not understand all this, we announced a few weeks ago about the passing away of one of our sisters 
at our Bexley Brand Church, Sister Sheung Akinshola. And on hearing the news by this sister, she was struck by a um, stroke. We prayed for her. God touched her. And those of our people that visited her saw the great improvement. A few days after, another stroke struck, which has left her now semi-conscious, still in the hospital. And we want to cry to God. Yeah. We want to call upon God Amen. that the blood shed on Calvary, yes. like an arrow, will be shot from Calvary and enter into our body. Amen. Even right now, Amen. shall we all pray.
We thank you, Heavenly Father. You have heard our cry. You are a God of impossibilities. Our impossible has become possible, Father God. We trust you and we believe in you. Our faith is in you. By the stripes of Jesus, Father God, you have heard us. We thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray, Father God. We know you have answered. In your holy name, Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. This morning is taken from Paul's epistle to the Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. We we'll read from verses 18 through to 25. 
Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God unto, into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beast and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them to uncleanness through the loss of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and saved the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen.
returning to the text that we had for our Bible reading, the book of Romans, the first chapter, reading verse 18. Romans chapter 1, I read verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. I um, was thinking about um, what devil is now going to do because he has found out that he is already defeated. He has lost one battle. Actually, many battles. And concerning God's children, he will continue to lose the battle with God's children. One battle that I felt within myself that he has lost is this battle of blocking people from knowing the truth. When we consider the um, explosion of technological advancement, I, I have a smartphone. It's called iPhone. And I did not subscribe to the one that will have too many megabytes or too many um, data or space or whatever you call it. So from time to time that I receive messages, the one I can read, I will read. And because it will soon tell me that my space is running out, so I will delete them. So I don't keep them. But there are some that I have no choice but to keep. And that has to do with some texts and messages that many people like to share about the truth about the word of God. Then I started thinking, if we will all be doers of those things that we are sending out and we are sharing, what kind of Christians do you think we are going to be? But I observed that perhaps many of us just share it around. Just have received this, you too can have it, and you too can, you know, all those things they will stand against us. Yes. The truth that you know, the truth that I know, I want to pray that God will make you and I to be doers. Amen. We don't want to be holding the truth in unrighteousness. That is rampant today. And may God himself help you and I to take this warning seriously. Amen. So, devil has lost that battle. Um, some people are making good use of social media in spite of its misuse. Some are still using it for that good cause, to share good news around. And the devil now found out that I cannot do anything about this. It's now beyond me. Now has decided to do something. And what is the problem? He decided to change tactics. He will let you have the truth in as much as you can just have it and hold it in unrighteousness. Just having it and not doing it. He's happy. You have it. That's fine. I can't block that from coming to you. But you will do everything possible to make sure that you and I, we do not do the truth. May God help us so that we are going to be doers when we know the right thing and we are doing the wrong things. We want to do that which is right that we know. This question of um, knowing the right thing and doing the wrong thing may be likened to being a pretender, not influenced by the truth, false religion, hypocrisy. Some people call it the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Professors are not possessors, liars. Have you ever heard people being called a sinning Christian? There is nothing like that. No. A Christian is a Christian. 
Or have you ever had an honest liar? Or they say a truthful thief. A thief is a thief. Truth and theft, they, they, they can't stand together. And that is what happens when we hold the truth that we know in unrighteousness, when we are not doers of that which we know. Many people that will be unraptured will be part of this group. And by the grace of God, you and I, we are going to make the rapture. Amen. Whether we are dead or alive, Amen. by the grace of God, Amen. because we will determine Amen. to do the truth. Amen. Come what may, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. It's like having a form of godliness and you are denying the power thereof. What is left? Emptiness, formality, powerless religion, ceremony. You know, such people, they will pass through heaven's gates into hell's flames. We don't want to do that. We want to get to heaven's gates and be welcome in. And that is what the Lord desires for you. That's what the Lord desires for me. And by the grace of God, it's going to help you and I to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. The wrath of God is revealed. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven. No matter who you think you are, you know the truth, but you buried it in your heart. You decided not to do it. You detained it. And it's telling you every time you know me. You know the right thing. And you are not doing that which is right. The wrath of God. Let us remember the wrath of God. There is nothing that can counter there is nothing that can withstand the wrath of God. When it comes, it comes. And we want to pray that God will not let us subject ourselves to his wrath. In Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 19 says, because that which they be known of God is manifest. That means it is shown in them, that is to them. For God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God, in his economy, has shown you and I what we need to do. He has different ways of doing that. Whether you come to church or you don't go to church, God has a way of letting people know what is right. That light that always lighted the path of every soul in this world will always shine out wherever. So it is not an excuse. I'm in the church or I'm not in the church. God has given us enough light to leave us without any excuse. To be able to face God and say, I don't know. There won't be anything like that. So what are some of these things that are considered the truth? After all, John 17, 17 tells us that thy word is truth. The word of God is that truth. Yes. And some of these we have been studying for some time now. You know, salvation is true. Yes. I have experienced it. And I can shout it out that salvation is real. Yes. Deliverance from sin is real. Yes. God delivered me from my sins. God forgave me my sins. God gave me a witness within me that my sins have been washed away by the blood of Jesus Amen. when I confessed those sins to him. That is an important truth. If you know it and you don't do it, the wrath of God from heaven is manifesting. That I pray Amen. that the mercy seat will avail. Amen. Just as we studied this morning, Amen. the mercy seat, Jesus Christ himself, who has died for your sin and my sins, who is making intercession for you and I now, at the right hand of his Father in heaven, 
God will look up to him and God will say, for your sake, I will forgive him. I will forgive her. If we want God to do that for us today, we can be sanctified, we can be made holy, we can have faith, the word of God that we've been hearing, we can consecrate our life, we can make restitution, we can offer ourselves, we can serve God acceptably, we can have mercy, and there is hell and heaven. You know, I read something that says something like, um, God has not called us to defend him. And that's what many people like to do today. They will tell you they are defending God. They are defending the gospel. No, 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 no. God hasn't called any of us to do that. God can defend himself. Yes. What God has called you and I to do is to represent him. Are you representing God? Am I? And when we do that which God himself has revealed to us, we will see that we'll be representing him very well. By his power, by his grace, we'll be representing him. How are you holding the truth that you know? Are those truths correcting your life? Are those truths changing your life? Are those truths making you better? Are those truths making you to grow? Or are you holding it in unrighteousness? Some people do that by saying that they are born in the gospel. They are parents. And that's true. What a privilege. I was not born into the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was born, my parents knew what they knew. There is something wonderful. For a father and a mother, a, a husband and wife to be God's children, and to have children and start to raise them up, even right from the womb. What a privilege. What an opportunity. But that child, with all the buffing, with prayers, and all that the parents are doing, when that child reaches the age of accountability, he has to make his own choice. She has to make her own choice to serve God or not. So it's not a question of, I was born in it. If you are holding on to that, and you are using that as a cover-up, you are holding the truth of the word of God in unrighteousness. Some people believe in outward show. Everything is um, the way they dress, which is fine. Remember what I said about being born by gospel parents? Nothing wrong in that. Fantastic. Also outward show, in terms of you know, the way you present yourself, the way you, you, you dress, the way you show yourself, very important. You can't just do anyhow, but you know that that is secondary to what we are talking about. We are talking of something deeper than that. So it's not a question of outward show. Some people will tell you that they have been in the church or in the gospel. Actually, the church is not the gospel. The gospel is the gospel. Thank God for giving us the gospel in our church. Amen. You say we are born in the gospel. Hallelujah. God bless you. It's a wonderful thing. Oh, you've been in the gospel 20 years, 30 years. Uh -uh. And what we see doesn't tell us. It's just a mouth. The truth that you know. Over 20 years, don't you think you should have been better than this? 20 years of experience, if it is not the same one year experience repeating 20 years. Do you get me? Shall I say that again? There is difference between 20 years of experience and 20 years of repeating one year experience. And after 20 years, you still have one year experience. Because the word of God that we are hearing over 20 years over 10 years, over five years, should make us better Christians. Yes. And that is when people can say, oh yes, you've been there. You are truly an old timer. So even being there for 20 years or 40 years, it's not the kind of thing we are saying. We thank God that those of us that the Lord has helped to be here for some years, we praise God for that. 
God did that, but that is still not the most important thing. Are you holding the truth of the word of God that you are hearing every time in unrighteousness? Or some people even like position. Maybe like myself, I can be a pastor, I can be a minister, I can be a choir member, I can be a teacher. They are not talking about position. They are talking about the truth that you know. The one that God has a record that you know. And then what are you doing about it? The names of those people that are holding all these truths that you are talking about in unrighteousness, they are not influenced by them. Their names are not in the book of life. They are not. For Jesus will say to them one day, depart from me. Ah, you preach. Yes, I, I was looking at you when you were preaching. You teach, you, 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 are, you are a teacher. Oh yes, you taught very well. I was, I, I, was, I, I, I was present in that congregation. You were a wonderful singer. Oh, yes. Everything I had, a great worker in the church. But as far as my record is concerned, depart from me. You are a worker of iniquity. May God come and help us. Amen. We know so much, some of us know so much, so much, and we're doing very little. And we are forgetting that that which we know is what God is going to use to judge me, to judge you. That is very important for us to know. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They knew all the truth, but they did something else. In about three places in verse 24, verse 26, and then from verse 28, God was saying, I give them up. I give them up. I give them up. May the Lord not give you up. Amen. May he not give me up. Amen. There are three things that he said there that he gave them up to. Look at verse 24. We are talking of people that know the truth and they are doing something else. He's saying that, having been warned several times, he's saying that God gave them up to uncleanness. Verse 26. God gave them up unto vile affections. Verse 28. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. What is left for that individual? May we cherish this truth. Amen. May he not give us up. Amen. Once you are given up, you are finished. But God has not given up on Amen. us. Amen. I believe that. Amen. My presence here and your presence here before God Amen. is an indication of his love Amen. that he has not given up on you. Amen. He has not given up on me. There is hope. Amen. There is hope. Amen. There is hope. Amen. Even when we are dead. Brethren, we don't need to be afraid of death. You can say, well, then why are you crying to God? For our sister who is sick. The word of God enjoins us to pray when we are sick. And we must do that. It is not as a result of fear of death. Whether you are afraid of death or not, it will come one day. You and I better be preparing. We don't know who is next. God has that list with him, the next person. And that is not what we should worry ourselves much about, for it will come when it will come. The important thing for you and I is the truth that you know, that I want to believe the Spirit of God is bearing witness to in your spirit right now and you are doing something different about it. That is where the problem is, and you need to do something about it. You know this happened literally to uh, some people in the Bible? And as, as I was studying this, I actually observed that this happened more even to those that are workers, those that are pastors, those that we can call pastors today, I mean, those that we can call a great men of God today, I mean. Think of the sons of Eli, they were consecrated priests. 
and they knew what they're supposed to do. But they decided to hold the truth that they have been told in unrighteousness, feeling that they can do as they please. They can do anything. If you look at their, 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 their profile, they were, they were called the sons of Belial. They were called priests. They were called people that were resident at the fountainhead. They were at the seat of power, but they were committing sacrilege. But they were committing adultery and fornication, even inside the church. People that have been vested with authority and power and know the truth and know the right thing and deliberately, we are not talking of sin of ignorance here. There can be ignorance and God has a provision for that. God knows that and God will take care of that when that comes to our knowledge and we confess to God. But not the one that we deliberately, willfully, knowingly, the sons of Eli. Even when their father advised them, when their father corrected them. But remember, when you are given over to a reprobate man, no correction works. My children, this thing that you are doing is coming to me. People don't come to the temple again because of your behaviors. This is what you are doing to people. This is what is happening to you. But they did not listen. They have been given up. May the Lord not give you up. Amen. They knew the truth. They were doing something different. What followed? Death. In one day. Because they thought they can just do whatever they want to do anyhow, even taking the ark of the ark we studied about this morning, that you should be trembling and being so afraid of. They just carried it anyhow. We are going to the battle. They knew what they should do, but they decided to do something different. Remember, I will continue to refer you to verse 18. That is where I'm hanging on, on this word of exhortation. The wrath of God from heaven. They were smitten dead immediately. They died. They will not die like that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Think about Nedar and Abayo. They were priests. Can you just imagine I was trying to study about this in the word of God? Of course, it happened to other people too. But you see so many priests in this situation. May God help all our workers. Amen. May God help all our ministers. Amen. Amen. Holding the truth in unrighteousness. God is noting. God has a record of it. We may not know. We may not see. But God sees. God knows. And is the one you are going to appear before when the time comes. Nadab and Abayo, priests, they were not ignorant of the truth. You know what they thought? Any fire would do. Any fire would do. When God had said, take the coal from the brazen altar into the holy place, for the incense on the golden altar. And if you study your Bible very well, you will notice in the book of Leviticus, where this happened in chapter 9, they were helping their father Aaron, the high priest, in doing just that, what was right. And then the word of God says that the glory of the Lord came down. The fire from heaven came down, blessed them. Amen. Then chapter 10 that followed. The thing got into their head. The Bible did not tell us exactly how it all happened. The Bible just simply put there that they took strange fire. You know the truth. And God knows what this strange fire represents in your life and in my life. And because today, that judgment of God is not like that which can just happen just like that, just like that, just like that. We should be just praising Jesus. Praising Jesus. Amen. For God could have done that too. Yes. 
God could have continued like that immediately. Who will remain? None of us will remain. But for Jesus, stay in his hand. I'm still expecting that you will not continue like that. That you will not continue like that. That you will do something about the truth that you know. Nadab and Abayu, they thought that doesn't matter. A little violation here, little compromise here, little adjustment here, little here, little there. You know, what is in is in, what is out is out. As far as God is concerned, if you are in, you better be in. That's why we hear the word of God every time, to be careful of remaining at the edge. Any little thing will tip you over. Go to the hub, H-U-B. Go to the center, the, cent the real center of what the Lord is demanding, what the Lord is saying. And at times when we hear some things that are very difficult for us, we go to God, God, this thing is difficult for me to do. This thing is, I, I don't know I'm going to do this. It's just too much for me. When we are honest with God like that, yes. God will be honest with us. Yes. He will help us. Amen. Amen. Yes. I was um, in my um, counseling with um, some young people about marriage. I said that there's nothing wrong in going before God and say, God, is, um, I didn't do that, but I believe there's nothing wrong in it, is um, Sister Stella. That's one coming to my mind. Okay, it's coming to my mind though, yes. that that would be my wife. But yes. I know I can still make mistake. Mm -hmm. But yes. that, that, that she has been coming to my mind since. Yes. I've been thinking of her since. Exactly. I, I didn't do that. Though. Anyway, yeah, but you can do that. That's what I'm trying to say. Yes. You can go before God. You know you talk to God like you talk to your father. Those who are honest. And God will be honest with you. God will let, God will let you know that Stella is not for you. It's for Isaac Adigo. God will let you know you are just looking at that. Yes, I, thank you my son for coming to me. You are being honest. You are asking me for the bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. Thinking it's Stella, it's Stella whatever that time. I don't want to call that again because that's not our name now. God will explain to you, okay, that, that love thing is going on between two of you and this and that, you know, the Facebook and the text and the, um, all those things, Twitter, whatever you call them, everything is going on. Now time comes now for you to make a final decision. Go before God and let God know this is what is, I, I, I'm being honest with you, God. Please, I don't want to deceive myself. I see yes. nothing is there. Something is there. Yes, of course. Of course. Talk to God like that. Yes. It's the same thing when it comes to the matter of forgiveness and sin yes. and confessing to God. I will continue to say that one thing that God has used yes. for me in this church is that we don't ask you to go and confess to a pastor. So, God has a record of it before anyway. So why are you hiding? Why can't you tell God, I know you have it. Open my page. My name is Isaac Adigo. You have my record. Open the page. Open, open. You have written it down. All about me. So I'm only just telling you, I've, I've, I've blown it. I know you noted it. And I too knew. So you have to have mercy upon me. The blood of your only begotten son must wash me must cleanse me. Amen. The Lord will answer your prayers. Amen. We are talking of being honest with yes. God. Let us stop all this um, uh, cover up uh, uh, brother, sister that we know I'm no more a brother. Don't you know yourself? Don't I know myself? Go on your knees and get it settled with God. That's what we talk about here. That's what we prioritize here. Amen. That's what we sell here. Amen. That's our stocking trade. Amen. Amen. It is not prosperity gospel. All, never. It's all about heaven. Amen. For Jesus is coming. Amen. 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 
What happened to them? Immediately, without warning, they died. Remember the wrath of God, verse 18. You remember um, Sister Safi and Brother Ananiah? You remember them very well? They knew the truth. They understood the truth. It wasn't ignorance at all on their part. But because they still want to be bearing brother, sister, they went to do something behind. Don't you know what you do outside the church? Don't you know what you do from Monday to Saturday? And then on Sunday, once I'm able to put on my tie and my suit, hello brother, hello sister, it's Sunday after all. And then Monday is coming, when I will be myself again, who are you deceiving? Brother Ananiah showed up after they have um, deceived themselves and um, the Spirit of God was trying to be of help to them to quickly confess, my sin has found me out, let me do something. Oh, well, you know, they, they have gotten to a stage where they have been given up, that they could not even see anything again. And when uh, Sister Saf now showed up, instead for now knowing what has happened, <laughs> Sister Saf, oh yes, did you sell? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, we don't know what happened. How did that happen? Ah, oh, who are you lying to? Who are you tempting? You are just. Don't you know that the spirit of God is here? It's the spirit of God we are tempting. It's not me. It's, I'm not the one in charge here. It's the spirit of God that is in charge. Yes. yes. And your, your people just carried away your husband. And before it was, she was able to think of, what are you talking about? What, what is going on? What happened? The wrath of God from heaven fell upon her. And that was time of great grace. A time of great grace. You know some people, they, they, they know very well how to play church. Angels in the church, devil at home. You know what you do they went in the church. That is the most angelic. Uh, 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 is it Gabriel? Or whichever one you want to call it? But let us stop deceiving ourselves. Let us be real with God. Don't let us continue to hold the truth in unrighteousness. The wrath of God. You know, we, we learned this morning about um, the, uh, the judgment of God represented by those angels, by those cherubims. Okay? And then inside there is any violation. And because people are violating and judgment is just not happening, as I said before, remember what was in between. Because Jesus Christ, the mercy seat, yeah. still there, that's why now some people think they can abuse. They can just do what they like, when they like it, how they like it, say it. This time of um, those days used to be like uh, um, 200 texts. Now it's unlimited. It used to be 500 minutes, and that's what we can afford. Now it's unlimited. It used to be a lot of uh, data to share things, to say things, to talk about anything you want to talk about. Have you forgotten that God has a record in heaven? Have you forgotten that God knows the truth that you know? The only thing that can deliver you and I from this is the genuine experience to have an encounter with God through the experience of salvation. We read there about how this thing has been revealed to them. Has God not revealed it to you and I? Over the past three weeks, we've been studying about the tabernacle. Okay, that's the Old Testament. And with the help of God, God has been in our midst helping us from step to step, showing us how we can compare that three steps in the tabernacle with the three steps that we are talking about today. What else do you want God to do? You know the way I thought of the tabernacle? We study about uh, all those tribes pitched around the tabernacle. I thought of it like this, as we are studying those lessons that 
One Jew will just decide that may decide as they are going about their business, uh, call another Jew brother or sister. I'm going to the tabernacle. What are you going to do? I've sinned. I need to go and do what the Bible says you should do. I don't know whether that person too. Ah, me too. I'm a sinner. Let's go together. Or somebody will just go on his own, and we we present himself to the priest. We find. Um, whether I can get a goat or a ram or, or a turtle dove or any wild animal that he can just go and pick if he hasn't got money to buy, and he will go voluntarily because of the conscience, yes. saying that you have done something wrong. That is the same thing we are doing today. Exactly. You remember what we were told about that gate, always open, so beautiful, represented by Jesus, saying, come in, come in, it's open ajar. For anyone that wants to come in, anyone that wants to come in, it's the same thing today. Amen. Jesus Christ is still that door. Amen. And it's opening a jar. Amen. And you don't need to look for any animal. You just go. Get on your knees. Jesus, I know you have died for me. You, you, you have paid the price. Your blood will avail for me. Save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Have mercy upon me. Enter! into the outer court. Amen. And by faith, Amen. those people, when that animal will be burnt on that brazen altar, they, now, they will leave. Nothing, no visible anything to tell them something has happened. But they had faith. Because God said they should do that, they did that, and then they will leave. And they are saved. At another time, they will remember something. I need to do, after that trespass offering, I want to get closer to God. I, something is still inside me that is still worrying me somehow. I will take my sin offering. Amen. And then there we go. Yes. You don't need to take any sin offering today. Jesus has done that. Yes. Yes. You should have hunger after you've been saved for sanctification. That is the truth. That is the word of God. That the truth is that you must be sanctified. And then you don't just have it. Some of us can teach these lessons. You can teach salvation. You can teach all the three, three steps. No problem for people at all. But do you have it? You know Jesus Christ has prayed for your sanctification. He will sanctify you today. All those that have been saved and are looking unto sanctification, that God come and sanctify me today. You just need to say, Jesus, it is your promise. It is your prayer that you have prayed for me, that I should be sanctified. And why will you not be sanctified anyway? Don't you know that without holiness, no one will see God? That should motivate you. Don't you want to see God? And just this morning, we are talking of going into the holiest of all. Holiest of all, which nobody could attain to before. Only the high priest, once a year, the high priest will go there. Now, Jesus Christ said, I will make that place open for them too. And when he died on the cross, and his body was pierced, and that water and blood gushed out, and he breathed his last, it is finished. And then, wah, just like that. They said it was a very thick cloth that ran open like that for you and I to be able to have Holy Ghost baptism. Why wouldn't you want to have Holy Ghost baptism? Don't you need a comforter? Don't you need a guide? Don't you need something to be reminding you of the things that you know? You need the Holy Ghost. Yes. And how do you pray for that? How do you ask for that? Holy Ghost baptism. You, 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 whatever. You know, it is during that time. That's why many people, they will tell you that they are saved, sanctified. I've been waiting for my um, um, Holy Ghost baptism for so, so, so years. For so many years. Okay. Today. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. As we have studied this morning. You just want to go before Jesus, before God, 
and let God know that it is your promise. Amen. I am taking you by your promise. Amen. That you will give me Holy Ghost baptism. Amen. Because without it, there is no power. Say, ye shall receive power. Yeah. Many people like to have power today. Whatever power you are seeking, seek this first. Amen. If God can let you have this Holy Ghost baptism, this power that you are talking about, there is nothing. Nothing. The whole world can be crumbling. But because God has given you that power, Amen. that boldness, you'll be able to stand Amen. and be effective witness. Amen. You don't need to be called the pastor, the minister, the, those, those who want to be fighting for that, leave that to them. You're already a worker Amen. for the Lord. You're already a minister. Amen. You're already a priest. Amen. And you have that power to keep working for the Lord Amen. in a manner that God will bless. Is there any truth that you know that you are holding in unrighteousness? Is there any truth that is very difficult for you to obey or to do? Is there any truth that you are feeling even right now guilty and condemned in your heart that you know? Don't tell me. You want to tell God. You want to let God see your heart and say, God, you see my heart. These are the truths that I know. And as a result, you are frustrated, you are afraid of the impending wrath of God. Today, that struggle, that wretchedness, that condemnation, that life of defeat, that fear can end. The Lord can put an end to it. If you will cry like Paul cried, there was a time Paul knew what was right and he was struggling. He wanted to do that which was right, he could not. Then he cried, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who shall deliver me from knowing the truth but doing the wrong thing? Thank God, through Jesus Christ. No more condemnation. That same Jesus, that same God, is the one that is present in our meeting right now. Do you feel like confessing to him? Do you feel like talking to him? The altars are open. I invite you to come forward and call upon God. He will answer your prayers and bless you. And you will leave this service today with assurance in your heart that you have met with the Lord. The altars are open as we sing the closing song when we walk with the Lord. Father, because of your mercy, 
you have called us again Amen. to think, O oh Lord. You know those things that are drawing us back. Yes, Help us, O oh Lord, to honor. We don't want to deceive ourselves anymore. No, no, no. Jesus, help us to honor. Amen. Help us to be truthful Amen. to ourselves. Amen. Bless us and make us a blessing. Amen. Save souls, O Lord. Amen. Sanctify. Amen. Baptize with the Holy Ghost Amen. and fire. Oh, yes. Give us victory. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.